Hello my friends. I have collected the top 10 effective budget decks for every class. In this video you will find the first half of these decks. I hope these decks will help you to climb the ladder, expand your pool of decks, have fun, or at least, do some daily quests. I will be grateful if you support this video. Pull up a chair by the hearth. One of the big complaints about Hearthstone is the price to play when you first start. <laughs> Time to pay! There are a ton of legendaries in the game, and if you are unlucky, you may not have received much in the way of playable cards. On the other hand, even if you are not a beginner, it is very difficult to have all of the matter decks for each class. This budget deck list should serve you pretty well if you are between rank 25 and 15. As you get closer to 10, however, the road is going to be much more difficult, and only a couple of them will manage to continue to climb steadily. I don't include any budget deck that has epic or legendary cards. There is nothing unusual here, and you can find many decks, like the ones I will show you, but I only collected actual decks for the current matter with the highest win rate. The 10th place is occupied by Warrior. Huh. Greetings. Warrior is not the easiest class to build a budget deck for in the Boomstay matter, but I found you a budget version of Rush Warrior. <laughs> My thanks. It will cost you 1360 dust to craft. The win rate is only 45%. That was an error. Yes, it is not much, but this is the best result that exists among the cheap warrior decks in the present day. The popularity of the archetype is 8% among all of warrior's archetypes. Rush warrior is an aggressive deck. The main idea is that decks actively use their weapons and minions to control the board and finish the opponents off with weapon and board synergy. Rush warrior decks did not receive any significant new cards from the Boomstay project, except Mekaru, a card that provides a sticky start, and Toxicologist, for an additional weapon buff. Mulligans for Rush Warrior are quite simple. Firefly, Fiery War Axe, and Mekaru are universal keeps. South Sea Deck Hand is keepable too if you have no other one drops. Weapon Synergy is a very important part of this deck. The spell card upgrade is best used as a 1-3 weapon in the early game to board control, or to upgrade a lesser mithril spellstone. Though the 8 added damage to Arcanite Reaper, or 6 damage to a fiery war axe, is hard to pass up. Both weapons are perfectly suitable targets for upgrade. I need a weapon. Which is surprisingly one of the most difficult cards to use in the entire deck. In ninth place is Priest. Light smiles upon the just. The most budget deck with a positive win rate is Spiteful Priest, but unfortunately, it costs 2980 dust, which is not cheap at all. Wow. Therefore, I propose to look at a really budget deck for the Priest, although it only has a 48% win rate. Combo Priest with Dragons got pretty popular in the Kobolds and Catacomb matter. I won't let you down. The cost of this deck is 1400 dust. The Boomstay project didn't have any dragon synergy, but it did come with a new combo tool, Topsy Turvy. This card acts as a third copy of Inner Fire, or can make taunt minions with high health easier to trade in. The best cards you can get in your early Marligan are North Shea Cleric, Radiant Elemental, and Power Word Shield. If you have one of these cards, you can keep some of your higher cost ones, like Shadow Ascendant, Tar Creeper, or Dusk Breaker. The combo, from which this deck gets its name, is in a fire, plus Divine Spirit. Divine Spirit doubles a minion's health, and in a fire, changes the minion's attack, to be equal to itself. If you have a minion with for example, 5 health on the board, playing 2 copies of Divine Spirit, and then targeting it within a fire, will increase its stats to 20, 20. 
In a perfect world, you would save a combo, for when you can use it to destroy the enemy hero, in one turn. With the new expansion, Paladin gains a mech package that takes advantage of the new magnetic keyword. I will fight with honor. <laughs> Personally, I choose Uther the Paladin. Thank you. I will serve. Magnetic minions can be played either as a minion or to buff a mech already on the board. In addition to the magnetic minions, the Boomstay project also includes Giggling Inventor, a powerful new board flooding tool. In this deck, Giggling Inventor provides taunts and divine shields to protect high value minions. Lost in the jungle, Righteous Protector, Mecharu, and Glotron are your main targets for your Marligan. You have a lot of one drops in your deck, so it's going to be common to see these. I have too many minions. Upgradable Framabut can be kept if you have something to play on your first turn. Dire Wolf Alpha can be kept with either a couple of one drops or lost in the jungle, which has good synergy with it. The basic strategy of this deck is to get control of the board early and then leverage that board advantage with War Gear or Fungal Mansa on turn 5. I can see. In 7th place is Whizbang the Wonderful. Fantastic! Ready for some fun? Yes, I know. You are already tired listening to me talk about this card. <laughs> oh. But I must briefly talk about this. You can craft it as a budget option. There's some disadvantages to the card. You don't get to choose the deck you get to play, and it will take longer for you to learn how to play any particular deck due to the random nature of the card. However, it is a good option, if you like the variety and the fun of playing multiple different decks you would not normally have access to. Roll! For the Frost Wolves! Token Shaman is an archetype that throughout the history of Hearthstone frequently asserts itself as a competitive deck in the standard format. I thank you. Today, the popularity of this archetype is only 0.4%. In the matter, it's 6% of all shaman decks. That's incredible! In general, Token Shaman looks to develop a whiteboard state through minions and spells that place multiple bodies on the board. While the deck's minions may seem harmless at first, when paired with Flame Tongue Totem and Bloodlust, even zero attack totems can become legitimate threats. The Boomstay project offers some exciting new support for the token shaman archetype. Voltaic Burst has ability to remove opposing minions while developing the board. Menacing Nimbus places a decent body on board and replaces itself in the process. Similarly, Storm Chaser helps you find the bloodlust to leverage your whiteboard to close out the game. Finally, Giggling Inventor and Macrotech Controller place three bodies on board, contributing to Token Shaman's game plan. On the Mulligan stage, you always want to catch Firefly, Mecharu, Menacing Nimbus, and Primal Fin Totem. These cards are perfect for a good start. Token Shaman plays as a board-centric mid-range deck. Many of the early game minions are included to ensure an advantage going into mid-game power turns. As such, getting ahead early is crucial. As for the results of the vote from the last video. The question was, do you think Hearthstone is the perfect game? So, does Giggling Inventor need a nerf? I created a new YouTube poll. Find the button on the screen. Vote and tell me your answer in the comments. Here are the most popular comments from the last video. Thank you for your activity, and special thanks to Chris. Cleaning commences. Perhaps you will find something interesting here. Here are some suggestions. 
Job's done.